-hmm. Shelley today, but uh, she'll be sharing her message. Um, I think Elliot has a thing or two he'd like to start off with. Yeah. Thank you, Elliot. Um, Good morning. As with any director, we're usually looking ahead, and that's the case right here. Um, first of all, I would like to invite you, if you are interested, to sing along with the Bluff Country Singers. Our rehearsals for the Christmas concert start Sunday, July 11th at 6 p.m. right here in this church. So if you're interested, we have a landline, so we're in a thing called a telephone book. Some of you probably know of that. And so if you'd like, uh, we'd love to have you give it a try. Next on the list is, um, in the last 15 months, have you ever thought, oh, that got taken away about many things? And maybe you came away with that thinking, possibly you might try something new. What I'm inviting you to do is to try the vocal choir, the senior choir here at church. We rehearse 7.45 to 8.45 every Sunday. And uh, we have a wonderful time doing it. And they will, we will start, I should say, on September 12th. It's the Sunday after uh, the Labor Day weekend. And then it brings me to a third choir. Um, talking about the Jubilee Bells. The bells have been ringing faithfully for a little of these many years, and I so appreciate them. And uh, their former direct, now former director, Myrna Legreed, needed to step away, and she doesn't feel she'll be coming back. And so I will be directing the bells. And if you are what we call a green hand in the bell ringer world, and believe me, I'm not there because I have never directed bells before. Uh, uh, a green, green hand is somebody who's never run before. And so I'm a green director in the bell choir world. And, uh, uh, but I do know a fair bit about some music, so uh, we think we'll get there somehow. And I'm looking forward to it. But I'm inviting you in the wake, in the end of this, we hope, pandemic to give it a try. Again, phone it, phone book, telephone is called a hand landline, and uh, I'll be putting more information in the coming bulletins and newsletters. Elliot does know a thing or two about music, believe me. Uh, uh, there are announcements in the bulletin. This is the first time I think that we've had any people work in front of us. Uh, this whole thing and it's kind of nice to be able to follow along and see things so uh, there are some rare concerns and some notes on that that uh, please take a look at those I'd also like to add a couple of thank yous uh, there was a group of people this last week I believe that that helped Pastor Janine and her family move into their house uh, there were quite a few of them I don't know maybe two, a dozen maybe 15 a, a, a good turnout a good group and uh, thank you uh, from all of us to those that, that made an effort to, uh, to take time to help that family out, to welcome them. I think that that's kind of an indicator of how excited we are as a group to begin this new uh, uh, adventure with, uh, with Pastor Jolene as our head pastor. I know I'm excited and I know you are excited too. It's good stuff. Thanks also uh, to John Hall for putting together these nice railings. Uh, if you've walked up here in front and, and been missing those for a little while, uh, these are solid, they're nice. He did a beautiful job on them, and so if you get a chance to see John, uh, thank him for that. It's uh, really nice. Uh, today, uh, we're gonna start out with a short video that is a tribute to Father's Day. So, McCormick, can you help us with that? Thank you.
Pastor Shelley Cunningham. I'm delighted to be here with the good people of our saviors today. I'm here on behalf of the Social Service of Minnesota, but also to support your congregation. And I'll be sharing a little bit about the ministry of LSS later on during the offering. But for now, I just want to say thank you for being here, and we are here to worship. So I invite you to prepare your hearts as you begin with the order of confession and forgiveness. We gather today in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to sing.
I want all the children, I need your help this morning. So I want all the children to come up and help me out. you got to pass these things out, so I'm going to need your help. Come on up. Can you not hear me? Reading is the 
Psalm 107. If you would join me on the uh, bolded verses, please. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of the foe, gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some went down to the sea in ships, plying their trade in deep waters. They beheld the works of the Lord, God's wonderful works in the deep. Then God spoke, and a stormy wind arose, which tossed high the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and descended to the depths. Their souls melted away in their perils. They staggered and reeled like drunkards, and all their skill was of no avail. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord, and you delivered them from their distress. You stilled the storm to a whisper, and silenced the waves of the sea. Then they were glad when it grew calm, when you guided them to the harbor they desired. Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful for all people. Let them exalt you in the assembly of the people and the council of the elders. Let them sing Alleluia. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning. And those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it, for the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord.
Arkansas, and my family liked to go camping. One of our favorite spots was a state park along the Little Red River. We'd hike and explore and fish and canoe. The Little Red River was perfect for canoeing. It was deep enough to be interesting, but still safe enough for kids. Now one summer when I was about seven or eight, we were camping with another family. While the dads took the other kids fishing, the moms decided to head out for a paddle. I would rather canoe than fish any day. Sorry to all you fishermen out there. So I went along with the moms. My dad drove us to the put-in and said he'd pick us up downstream in a couple of hours. And off we went. My mom in the front, her friend Sandy in the back, and me settled in the middle on a cushion. It was a glorious day. Not too muggy, not too buggy, not too hot. While the moms chatted away, I looked at the scenery. There had been a massive storm a couple of weeks earlier, and you could still see downed tree limbs and debris scattered on the bank. I was perfectly content to sit and watch and relax as we floated along. None of us could have known the danger that was to come. The disciples could have used a day to relax. As Mark tells it, they hadn't had a moment to catch their breath. Their heads must be spinning. In just a few short weeks, they've seen Jesus preach and teach and tell stories and cast out demons and heal and call disciples and stir up the crowds. And now, they're headed off on a new adventure, a mission trip of sorts to the other side of the big lake. So they pack up some food, and they hop in a boat, and they set off on the water. None of them could have known the danger that was to come. Or maybe they did. Many of the disciples were fishermen, after all. They'd surely been out on this particular lake, the Sea of Galilee, loads of times. Now, any good fisherman knows that there's a risk that comes with being on the water. It doesn't take much to turn a pleasant sail into a nausea-inducing roller coaster ride. The Sea of Galilee is actually fairly shallow, but it lies at the base of a bunch of hills, and so when a storm comes up, the wind comes rushing down through the pass, scooping up water and kicking up ferocious waves with hardly any warning. And sometime after dark, that's what happens. The water is washing over the side of the boat, and the boards are creaking, and the white capped waves are threatening to send them all to the bottom of the lake. And these usually seaworthy fishermen are terrified. So the flow of the Little Red River that my mom and Sandy and I were canoeing on is controlled by a dam at the end of Big Earsbury Lake in Arkansas. Usually the water was let out in the middle of the night when it posed the least danger. And there was always a good warning siren in advance to give people time to clear the banks. But for some reason on that Sunday, the water was released from the dam in the daytime. And we must have missed the warning siren because when the rush of water came spilling downstream, we were caught completely off guard. The water rose four or five feet in a matter of minutes. My mom and Sandy were both good canoeists, but there was no way they could control our little boat. Soon water came rushing over the edge and a floating stump into canoe and we capsized, washed into the angry river. I remember that the water was very cold and very fast. My life jacket kept my head near the surface as I swept downstream. And I could hear my mom calling to me, telling me to try and keep my feet up, too, so my legs wouldn't get caught in those now submerged tree branches below. Sandy was trying to hold on to the gunnels of the canoe, which was bobbing along upside down. Everything else was long gone. My shoes, mom's glasses, the paddles, my cushion. We floated downstream for who knows how far, 100 yards, 200, 300 before our canoe bumped into a tree and gave us something to hold on to. It all went by so fast, there was barely time to be afraid. 
at least not in the moment. The disciples must have been afraid too, but it all goes by so fast. They wake up Jesus, he climbs up on the deck, he puts out his hands and tells the waves, be still. And just like that, the storm is over. The boat stops rocking, the sea is like glass, and there's barely a rustle in the breeze. And that's when the disciples get really frightened. Who is this? Who is this? What has he done? Their hearts, which had been beating wildly just a few seconds earlier, are suddenly stone cold in their chests. The NRSB says that the disciples were filled with great awe, but that's not really right. The Greek says they feared with a great fear. They were really scared, terrified. Jesus can see it in their eyes. They're not afraid of the storm. Of him. Because up until that moment, perhaps, Jesus has been just a man. A powerful man, a brilliant man, a compassionate man, but still flesh and blood just like them. But suddenly, he is no longer who they think he is. He can control the uncontrollable, he can fix the unfixable. Who is this? Sometimes I think in our inclination to see Jesus as our friend, we often lose sight of God's unbelievable power. Do you think that's true for you? A couple of years back, a family came to talk about getting their baby baptized. But they said they wanted to take out the part of the baptismal service that prayed their son would be filled with the fear of the Lord. They didn't like that it sounded like we should maybe be afraid of God. God is good, they said, and gentle, and merciful, and gracious, our help in times of trouble. And that is all true. We believe that God is good, and gentle, and gracious, but it also doesn't fully describe the God of the Bible. After all, God is not always safe in Scripture. But God is sovereign, filled with power beyond anything we can imagine, which means that we should indeed fear and love God. We don't have control over God, you see? In some ways, that's what keeps our relationship in check. Because again and again, we see that God listens and God loves and God can be trusted. And that is what makes God, God. In a story like the Gospel story for today, it's good for us to remember that sometimes it is the powerful side of Jesus that we need the most. There are so many things beyond our control. Weather, health, accidents, other people. And when the winds howl and the storms rage and we are in danger of being swamped in our own lives, we can realize just how fragile we are. But that is exactly, exactly when we most need a God who isn't afraid, who stands in the face of our fear and says, peace, be still. Friends, if there's anything you take away from this story, let it be this. Whether you are enjoying a marvelously ordinary day on the lake, or you feel like you're about to get swamped by a raging storm, know that you are not alone in the boat. You are not alone in the boat, because Jesus is there with you. And Jesus shows up in the most unexpected ways, through a helping hand, through a still whisper that calms your soul, through a powerful word of scripture, through the steadfast faithfulness of a community that cares for the most vulnerable and for one another. Being in the boat with Jesus does not always mean we'll be safe and cozy. Faith is a sort of comfort, but it does not always keep us comfortable. But being in the boat with Jesus does mean that we belong to the one who has power even over the wind and the waves. And that is good news indeed. Back on the Arkansas River so long ago, my mom and Sandy and I hung onto that canoe with the freezing water for I don't know how long. And you know what kept us from panicking? 
Bible school songs. We had just finished BBS at church the week before, and so we sang. We sang, he's got the whole world in his hands, and allelu, alleluia, and rise and shine. We sang, and we sang, and we tried not to think about how cold and wet and scared we were. And we were still singing when a man in a motorboat came up, and we were rescued. And of all the things that happened that day, singing those VPS songs is what sticks out most clearly in my head. And maybe that's why I still love canoeing. Because despite my fear, through those familiar words, God let me know that Jesus was in the boat with me. So how do you know that Jesus is in the boat with you? I want you to think on that question, mull it over, because the answer matters. Knowing an answer to how you trust that Jesus is with you can give you the strength to keep moving forward even when you're terrified. It can help you step into the unknown. It can give you the courage to reach out with compassion and share love and generosity with someone who needs it. How do you know Jesus is with you? Keep that answer close to your heart and pull it out when you need it. Because friends, we all have days that we feel like we're going to be swamped. But know that on those days, Christ is with you. And he stands in the face of your fear and says, Peace, be still. Amen. <coughs>
been involved with LSS, but many of you probably know a little bit about the ministries LSS does here in this county and across the state. But I wanted to tell you the story. You see, LSS started with children, and I know that's a passion of our saviors as a congregation. 155 years ago, there were four children who had recently immigrated to Minnesota from Sweden, and they were suddenly orphaned. They had no family to care for them. They had no place to go. And the word of this heartbreaking story reached Pastor Eric Aurelius, who was the pastor at Rural Mesa Lutheran Church up near Red Wing. Now, Pastor Aurelius didn't know what he was going to do with four orphans, but he knew he had to do something. And so he hitched up his horse and his buggy, and he drove the wagon up to St. Paul, and he picked up those children, and he brought them back to his church and said, Christ calls us to care for them. And then he watched as the members of his church opened up their hearts <coughs> and cared for these four kids. And they converted the church's tiny basement into a little orphanage. And they turned it into an orphanage for big more children. And that children's home grew and grew until it eventually became Lutheran Social Service of Minnesota. Now I can share an impressive list of facts and stats about LSS. And trust me, if you want facts and stats, find me after church. <laughs> but this is what I want you to know. One in every 65 residents of our state is a recipient or a participant in an LSS ministry. It's blessed by the help of more than 8,000 volunteers every single year. And LSS is consistently rated by the Minnesota Charitable Review Council as one of the most effective places to put your money. It's good stewardship. But the facts and the stats pale in comparison to all of the stories of lives that are touched by the generous gifts that people like you make. If there's a need, odds are pretty good that LSS has a program to help it. They offer support for veterans, they offer adoption services, refugee resettlement, they help youth experiencing homelessness, and people who are hungry, and adults with disabilities, and folks who are struggling with debt. In all, there are countless numbers of programs that help share love and care for the neighbor in the name of Jesus. And they offer the concern and the support for people who need a hug, or a hand, or a helping chance. And because of gifts of people like you, LSS is able to continue those ministries. You can't save the whole world, of course, but you can be a part of an organization that helps make a difference. Now, given the pandemic last year, there wasn't an opportunity to come and say thank you in person. But in case you didn't know, our Saviors was the recipient of the 2020 Servant of Christ Award from LSS. And I want to say thank you for that. LSS wanted to recognize all of the ways in particular that you have been instrumental in helping children and youth in this part of the world through Go to the Village, of course, and through your support for the Lutheran Campus Center at Monona State University. We also know that you have been generous with your time and with your culinary skills through your pastoral ministry, and we want to say thank you for that, because when we feed people in their tummies, we feed them in their hearts. I also want to say thank you for all of the ways that you continue to pray for the ministry of LSS. I'm passionate about this organization because I know it is with our hands that Jesus' love is shared. And so thank you. Thank you for ways that you are keeping this ministry in your prayers and taking care of one another and sharing the light of Christ with the world. Thank you. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. The response to these petitions will be here on prayer. Holy God, you gather your people from east and west, north and south. We pray for the mission of the church throughout the world, that your steadfast love may be known to all peoples. Bless the people of our companion synods in Colombia, South Sudan, and Tanzania, and our sponsor, Child of Asani. May our partnership with the ministries of Lutheran Social Service continue to thrive and build bridges of hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You laid the foundations of the earth, and the waters are the womb of creation. The morning stars sing your name, and all creation shouts for joy. We pray 
for your blessed creation that it may continue to flourish and magnify your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You keep watch over all nations. We pray for countries experience violence, hunger, and unrest. Guide worldwide and local community organizations in their efforts to establish safety and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are close to the brokenhearted and near to those in distress. We pray for those who are experiencing health issues, especially Calvin and Jerry. Be with those who live with confusion, with chronic illness, and with pain. Support their caregivers with energy and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You dwell with us in this faith community. We pray for our leaders and elders, especially our newly pastor Jolene and her family as they move into our community. Grant them knowledge, patience, and kindness, that through their leadership you may be exalted in this assembly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your love endures in all situations. On this Father's Day, we pray for those who are fathers or those who wish to be fathers, for those with broken or strained relationships, for those who are missing their fathers, and for fathers who have lost children. Bless and strengthen them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to stand and receive this blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you. And may the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.